Angel, you're going to run for governor. You know, there's a lot of candidates. They're brainless. They have bare bird brain. You're better than them. Angel, you're going to run for governor. Okay, Angel? Okay, let's watch this video. A lot of bird brain. Candidate. Okay. Governor Gavin Newsom only has two years left on his term as governor, but there are a number of left-wing lunatic politicians lining up to replace him. Do you know who? Coming up, we'll go through the scary list of lunatic leftist Democrats trying to replace Governor Gavin Newsom. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and uh, you and I would love to see Governor Gavin Newsom vacate the governor's office in California as soon as possible. This guy is a piece of, I'll be polite, a piece of work. <laughs> you thought I was going to say something else. Well, he deserves it, but it's a family show. Uh, yeah, Newsom is a terrible governor, and uh, pretty boy Newsom has never earned anything in his life. He's uh, demonstrated that he's corrupt. Uh, and he has failed on every count, giving us the highest cost of living, the um, uh, worst job creation rate uh, of any state in the, in the country, um, the uh, uh, highest cost of electricity and, and, and water. Um, he's given us uh, schools that are failing our students, a crime wave and a homelessness epidemic. Uh, the list goes on and on. But can you imagine California having a worse governor? Sadly, it's likely going to happen, and that is just based on the uh, left-wing lunatic candidates that are lining up to replace Governor Gavin Newsom in the next election. Newsom is term limited, and uh, that means that in 2026, a mere two years from today, we're going to have uh, an election and a new governor. We've got a list of candidates that we want to walk through and warn you about them, because these folks are pretty damn scary. Um, and the list that we have, uh, we'll go through four confirmed candidates, but there's also some potential candidates I want to talk about uh, real quick. Uh, the first candidate is the current lieutenant governor of the state of California. You don't know who she is because, you know, most of the people I'm going to go through you don't really know, uh, but you need to know. Eleni Kunalakis. Yeah, memorable, huh? Yeah, she's lieutenant governor. Uh, basically, her family's uh, a very rich family, very similar to Governor Gavin Newsom, billionaires, and they bought her this seat a few years ago. Uh, she's not accomplished anything in her life. Um, she's uh, very unimpressive. She's a, a Greek uh, immigrant uh, 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 descendant, a daughter of a Greek immigrant. Um, and uh, her family, as I mentioned, uh, has a good amount of money. Um, and uh, basically, her family bought her this seat. Now she wants to run for governor. Um, so there's not much to say about her uh, other than, well, she's entitled, like Gavin. You know how that worked out. The next candidate is Tony Thurmond. Thurmond is currently um, the state superintendent of schools which means he is wholly owned by the California Teachers Union. That's right. Teachers Union own him, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, they put him into office. He, he does whatever they want. Uh, they say jump. He says how high. Um, and his record as the uh, chief school advocate is dismal. He has presided over schools where two-thirds – on average in the state of California, two-thirds of California students are failing math proficiencies. A majority of students are failing reading and writing proficiencies. While he says that he's so woke and fighting racism, you want to see a racist uh, institution? Go look at a Democrat-run school district that is uh, supported by Tony Thurmond because African-American kids are failing math in those schools and reading and writing at a 80% and 70% rate, respectively. Um, Tony Thurmond, uh, again, is, uh, is running based on race. 
uh, and uh, he can't run based on what he's done on education uh, for damn sure. And so he believes, because he's the uh, racist uh, fighting uh, candidate, that's how he's positioning himself, and himself, that he somehow will get that lane. Um, you take, uh, unlike with Eleni Kunawakis, the, who's done nothing, let's see what uh, Tony's story is here. Tony Thurman, oh, he's got a video. Yeah, we're not going to be watching no video here. Uh, let's see, meet Tony. Uh, okay. So uh, he, was, he says he experienced poverty. <laughs> Join the club. Most Californians are experiencing relative poverty because uh, they're in debt uh, because of our cost of living. Um, he says that uh, he was a social worker and uh, he you know, worked to help uh, develop school-based mental health programs. Uh, including one aimed at addressing the issue of chronic absenteeism. How's that working out for the state of California now that you are the superintendent of schools? <laughs> anyway, he uh, got elected uh, with the help of the teachers union. Uh, not elected, let's just say installed. It's, it's more accurate. To the West Contra Costa School Board, the Richmond City Council was his next stop, and then he went into the California State Assembly. Oh, so he's a career politician. Wonderful. He uh, has been making the laws, but not actually living under the laws and experiencing a real life. So career politician, uh, uh, agent or pawn of the teachers union, Tony Thurman. Next one is Tony Atkins, but she spells her name with an I. She's running as the gay candidate. Uh, yep, you got, you got the Greek candidate who's family bought her the, uh, the, the, the office she's in right now. You have the African-American, I'm going to fight racist candidate, um, the teacher's union um, uh, tool. And then you have the gay, the gay icon, Tony Atkins. Um, Tony Atkins, uh, uh, you know, has been a career politician. She started out as a staffer for a city council member in San Diego. Then she took that staffer's council, uh, as a staffer, she took her boss's job uh, when her boss termed out. She was a city council member for two terms. Then she took her previous boss's state assembly seat and, uh, for six years. And then she did two terms as California state senator. Um, so she's a legislator. And now she's running for governor. Again, no real world experience. Never run a business. Never run any sort of organization. She's a career politician. Uh, but what's interesting about Tony Atkins is her wife. Her wife is a housing first homeless dependency consultant. Um, her wife basically is a developer on these government subsidized projects and a consultant to these government subsidized developers. And imagine this, Tony Atkins has been the author of legislation funding all the programs that provide very lavish consulting payouts to her partner, Jennifer Lassar. So uh, yeah, pay to play politics, just like Governor Gavin Newsom, no change there. Oh, let's go to another one. Betty Yee, Betty Yee. Okay, so who's Betty? Betty Yee uh, was the comptroller for the state of California. So she screwed up our checkbook. Um, the former state comptroller, that's, uh, that's her job. Uh, so she's uh, seemingly running as the Asian American candidate. You see how each of these candidates kind of pick their lane? Look, I'm not making this about identity politics. They have made it about identity politics. To them, they see a world of race, skin color, sexual orientation, and that's the niche that each of them are trying to take here. Uh, by the way, on policies, I don't need to describe the difference. There's no difference between these four leftist lunatics. They all hate the uh, uh, parents of the state of California want parents to be cut out. They all see a world of homophobia, racism, and sexism. Uh, they all um, want to raise your taxes. They all are tools of one union or another, uh, uh, and they're going to stand up just to give the sweetheart deals to the labor unions. They are all for the dependency state of a higher, uh, more lavish welfare system and an open border for illegal immigration. And of course, they all are okay with criminals getting rights, but crime victims not being protected. 
So here you got um, Betty Yee, and uh, she's basically saying that, you know, she um, um, uh, was the governor's budget director, so she's a, a, a staffer. Imagine this, another career politician, staffer. And then she uh, decided to run for the State Board of Equalization. Ah, a politician. And then she got elected to the comptroller. And, uh, you know, uh, again, career politician. Now she, they say that she has a nonprofit. <sighs> She's got a no-show job that a bunch of campaign donors are giving a nonprofit to, uh, nonprofit contributions to. Uh, those are those, uh, 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 you know, no-show jobs that the politicians set up for themselves through a 501c3. So let's talk about this. Who are the other candidates that may run? Well, Wikipedia has a little tracker there. Rob Bonta, the Attorney General of California. Rob Bonta, the patron saint of California criminals. Doesn't want to prosecute criminals, just wants to go after his political opponents. It's called abuse of power. Maybe Antonio Villarogrosa, former mayor of Los Angeles. I think he got appointed to some ambassadorship after a lot of controversy. Uh, he did run for governor in 2018 and lost spectacularly. Um, he may rear his ugly head again. Rick Caruso, a real estate developer. He was a runner-up for mayor of Los Angeles in 2022. I'm hearing a lot of interest on his part. He would position himself as sort of like the non-traditional Democrat. Wait, he's actually a registered Democrat now. I think at one point he may have been a Republican. Then he went independent. Now I think he's a registered Democrat. Can't beat him, join him. Is that it? Again, probably would be a better governor than the whole lot of leftists there, but um, he would be treated like a Republican in this race. So if you're going to be treated like a Republican and then criticized by Republicans for not being principled and sticking your guns, why not just run as a Republican? Oh, I know you say that a Republican can't win, but I disagree. I think the reason why Republicans don't do well in California is that we have a dumpster fire for a political party in the current version of the California Republican Party. But I believe that the situation in California is so bad that we do need either an independent or a Republican to unite behind and to fight behind uh, in the next governor's race. It's going to be hard, no doubt about it, but you got to keep running quality candidates one after, after another, one after another, to start shifting the landscape in California. Um, I believe that there will be other candidates emerging. No, not me. Do not even start. I've got to be on the outside leading the fight as chairman of Reform California. But I'm talking to several other dark horse candidates on the independent and Republican side of the aisle who I think might make very attractive gubernatorial candidates in 2026. We pretty much know who the Democrat lineup is, all right? And it should scare the bejesus out of you. You should be very afraid of the Democrat lineup in California for governor in 2026. But what we need is a good candidate on the center right. And we need to get behind one candidate, let the others fight amongst themselves, and we should get that candidate to start early. At Reform California, we're laying the groundwork for that. And of course, I want candidates for all the statewide offices, lieutenant governor, attorney general, comptroller. If you don't file quality candidates, you'll never have a shot to win. So I urge you to help us do that. Join the movement because we're recruiting candidates for the statewide offices, as well as recruiting candidates for state assembly, state senate, Congress, all the way down to school board, water board, fire district, and city council. Join us by contributing online at reformcalifornia.org because we're entirely funded exclusively by supporters like you. You're the only one that will give us the gas in the tank to fuel this movement. Also, sign up online down here at the bottom where you can get our weekly updates on breaking news. Subscribe and like this channel. Smash that notification button so that you can get our podcast every day at 5 o'clock and be notified of breaking news uh, on California politics. And uh, please do check out our voter guide every election and share with your friends because that's how we move the needle best, is getting our plain English voter guide at Reform California into the hands of so many voters on ballot measures so they know what they're voting on because the ballot measure titles are deceptive and, and confusing, as well as 
giving recommendations for all the candidate races. Uh, check it all out at reformcalifornia.org. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website reformcalifornia.org for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024. Angel. 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 Lots of uh, bird brain, huh, Angel? We're going to run for governor, okay? You're, you're qualified, okay? Against those bird brain, okay, Angel? Run for governor, okay? Carl DeMaio, he's our hero, okay? Okay, Angel. Let's watch the video again, okay? Okay, let's watch the video. Those bird brain. Hi, Angel. Okay, we're gonna run for our governor. You're much up qualified. Okay, bye-bye. Let's watch the video. Good morning.